Alexa, she's going to start with the word all right. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, guys. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in. It's Weird Mythic Podcast, and I'm here with the amazing, beautiful, coolest chick ever, Serena. Keep going, don't stop. Shit, I have no more adjectives. 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 I'm here with Naomi, and words are hard, as a boy. (laughs) This is episode 11. Welcome back, guys, yes. to Weird Mythic Podcast. Yes, thanks, you guys, again for listening to us. We really appreciate everybody listening and all the support we've been getting online. Oh, my um, gosh. I love our dude. little family that I we have. I know. I didn't realize how many people are so supportive in the world. I know. Like, it's awesome yes. to see real humanity. Huge and I appreciate shout out. It. I'm going to give a huge, huge, Please. huge shout out to my girl, my soul sister, Kayla. Okay? Mm-hmm. Shout out, girl. We love you so much. She bought... Our first merch item. We have yeah. merch now. Merch. And she bought one. And go ahead, tell them about the merch. Guys, where are <laughs> cartoons? Oh there, my god, yes. There's <laughs> cartoons of us, and it's awesome. And we're yes. just freaking out because it's hella cute. And we also have like a little gravestone emblem that has weird mythic on it. And we're really doing this because, you know, it's Halloween coming up. It's almost spooky season. And then we're like... Well, this artwork is really good yes. and hella cute. So, yeah, um, Serena, take it away. We got all kinds of merch with those cute little cartoons of us on it. Definitely. And we're going to link the um, the link to the girl mm-hmm. who did it, Fleshwad. She's yes. awesome. Shout out. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. These images are so freaking cute. So cute. I'm so obsessed. Yeah, I'm, like, really close to just getting a tattoo of myself <laughs> as a cartoon. It's like, it's just adorable. <laughs> They're so cute. So, we're going to have the link to our merch mm-hmm. down below in the description yes and also on twitter instagram it'll be on our link tree mm-hmm. it'll be everywhere you guys because we have a code for you a code a code to get for 10 percent off 10 percent off your purchase until halloween mm-hmm. october 31st it will expire so use the code it's mythic m-y-t-h-i-c code mythic mm-hmm. to get 10 percent off and wear us on your body. <laughs> wear us on your body, please. Or drink us out of your coffee mug. Oh my God, yeah. You know, um, or put us on something. We got stickers. Stickers. Too, and phone cases. Masks. Mask <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> mask up. <laughs> wear us on your face, please. Yes. <laughs> we yes. did mention about the giveaway. Mm-hmm. So we're going to announce the specific details of how to enter the giveaway on October 1st. That'll be on our Twitter and our Instagram and Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And then you guys are going to get to pick out a merch item Mm -hmm. that you want if you win the giveaway. And we will send it to you at no charge at all. Exactly. We're going to be buying it and supporting ourselves so you can wear us. (laughs) And then, oh, take pictures if you guys buy any merch. We can post you everywhere. Yeah, I would love to see people wearing us. And we can actually see people who are listening to us (laughs) instead of just seeing you as a number on one of our sites. So. Add us, do all that. Yes, and what is that code again for our merch? It's code MYTHIC, M-Y-T-H-I-C. Perfect. 10% off. 10% off, guys. Yes. All right, and today's episode (laughs) is fun. It's our, I want to say best-selling, but that's not it. It's our most listened to episode. Yes, we're doing more cryptids. cryptids. Yeah. I'm excited. Yes, and actually we're just finding so, there's so many cryptids out there. And, yeah, it's just fun to be able to just pick and choose which ones I want to do, honestly. Yeah, so, reminder again, we're going to be coming out with five cryptids episodes mm-hmm. for the month of October. So, please send us your recommendations if there's yeah. a cryptid you guys want us to cover. Mm-hmm. Naomi, go yes. ahead and take it away, girl. Serena, gladly. <laughs> All right. I'm going back to the Scottish and English and Irish little area of our world. (laughs) Um, I talked last time about red caps. And um, if you guys remember, those guys are the ones that like, quote unquote, protect the castles away from people and will throw rocks at you so you don't come near them. So (laughs) I wanted to do something a little more nicer this time um they are i'm gonna be talking about brownies which you mentioned in that episode yes a little i did bit. a little bit yeah. so and i thought it was dessert yeah and it's not i'm sorry it's just 
they're actually they're little people, okay? Don't eat <laughs> itty them. itty bitty little people. Don't eat them. Oh my gosh, okay, like little minahunis. The, a little what? Oh, <laughs> the what? Remember from Hawaii the minahunis? Yeah, yeah. So actually, these are smaller than those. They're like really? itty bitty yeah, they're little like people, this big, are they? We're, we're, if you guys can't tell, we're showing each other like the sizes of our <laughs> fingers. Like this is how big they are. All right, so a brownie. It is pretty much the opposite of our murder red caps that I talked about a couple weeks ago. They are a house spirit, kind of a fairy little goblin guy. Um, I say guy because majority of the sightings are still men, which was also with red caps. I thought that was interesting. But what they do is they clean your house for you or perform more perform work around the farm. I need so, that. Right? They're very helpful little people. Um you don't need to pay them, which I think is even better. <laughs> By <laughs> so, donation only or <laughs> kind of. Yeah. So what they do require is some sort of offering daily for them performing all of your chores around the house or the farm. They prefer milk or cream. Um, but any type of food or drink will do. You just kind of leave them, like, have a little designated area for your little, you know, offerings to like the brownies. Like milk, and cookies, but... Yeah, actually, I was going to mention <laughs> something about that, so thank you. But yeah, that actually reminded me of, like, we're leaving milk and cookies out for these people to clean our house. I'm fine with that. I wish Santa would clean my house. Right, right. Instead of bringing all those presents and having your kid and make I the house a mess. And clean up. <laughs> so, yeah, so... These little house spirits will clean the house for you as long as you keep giving them that offering of like some milk or something to drink or eat. However, do not take them for granted. If they want the milk before they go and do their chores and it's not there, they're not going to be happy. And then you're not going to have any chores done. Um, So if you take them for granted, they could uh, then be turned into what is called a Bogart Oh, I've heard of that. Um, yeah, and they're I think also Harry Potter. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Which they're kind of like you know little mischievous little fairies as well. Um, if you offend them, they will leave the home. Um, they can be mischievous. They do not like laziness, and they will play pranks on lazy humans and human servants. So, <laughs> this goes back to like people living in castles and having people work for them in their houses like all day and all night if the brownies noticed that one of the servants wasn't doing the chores correctly they would start playing pranks on these servants because the brownies have to go by and clean up after them um i mentioned that uh you don't want to offend them so a way that you could offend a brownie is by offering them a gift like like, remember Dobby from Harry Potter, who was a house elf, right? Yeah. You present him with clothes, and he's excited, and he's free. No, don't do not do that to the brownies. They don't want clothing. They don't want any sort of gifts. They don't want you doing things for Nothing them. Nothing, like, material. Nothing material. They just want exactly. milk. They just want milk and cream, and then they'll be happy and continue cleaning your house. I'm fine with that. Right? <laughs> they only like to work at night. They will not come out during the day. Um, They don't want to mess with humans or really see us. They appreciate us being here. They appreciate us giving them something to do, I'm guessing. But, um, yeah, they don't like to, you know, come out during the day. They don't like to be spied on, so don't spy on them. Don't be like, you know, kids during Christmas wanting to see Santa and staying up all night waiting for him. Don't do that with the brownies. They will then take offense, and then they will leave. (laughs) That they'll clean your house all night. So that's pretty interesting. Nice. I mean, I I would love that if some little people were <laughs> cleaning my house randomly at night. I'm like, can you pack for me too? Because mm-hmm. yeah. we got a lot to I do. Know. I know, girl. <laughs> so, um, but yes, they do, like I said, expect the food every night. And then they'll continue cleaning your house and they'll be all happy. And let me talk about kind of what these guys look like, because they're not the prettiest of creatures, which I thought sucked because they sound so cute. (laughs) And so apparently um, the reason they're called brownies is because the color of their skin is like this weird brown color. They're also covered in wrinkles. So gross. (laughs) Um, They're also (laughs) covered in short curly hair. They sometimes wear a hood and... um, they sometimes look like itty bitty children, but like I've been told that they're like very small compared to all the sightings or like things I've read about. Like There's four inches. Like tiny little okay. things. So, but they kind of look like children. They don't look like adults. They're like wrinkly children. Wrinkly children. 
Yeah, I know. That's frightening. I know, right? It sounds kind of scary when you describe what they look like, but you're like, they're these little people who are cleaning your house. So in my head, I'm going to think they're adorable. <laughs> um, you just said they were gross. I know, but it's because like they're called brownies. <laughs> and I her think house. I think that brownies is a cute name. Yeah. I expect these creatures to be cute. But I don't have any brownies cleaning my house at night. So. That's because you think they're gross. Sorry, guys. Don't be wrinkly. Do I don't you know. Put out milk? No. I don't. Try it. I don't. I'm just gonna put out milk. Louis I'm... will drink it. Louis doesn't come in the house. Oh, he's when he's trying to scare the shit out of exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I mentioned Dobby earlier from Harry Potter and how he was dressed in like rags as his clothes. That's how brownies prefer to dress, and hence why they don't want any gifts giving them clothes or anything like that. Something that I thought was also interesting that, remember when I was talking about red caps, how they don't like iron or Catholic Christian symbols? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for brownies. They don't like Christian symbols. Don't know exactly why. I'm just going to go back to how, you know, Catholicism was coming in and taking over other types of religions and beliefs. So I think that has something to play with it. And yeah, they just complete their stuff at night and they'll clean your house. So, I mean... Yeah, nothing really bad about that, I feel like. (laughs) Um, I will like to talk about, so if you treat them bad, and as I said, they could be turned into Bogarts, so they would start destroying stuff in your home at that point. If you disrespect them, giving them a present, spying on them, trying to talk to them, they'll start destroying your house as a Bogart. So in the opposite. They turn exactly into the opposite. Um, They also feel like that if, if you are lazy... And if you are trying to spy on them or anything, there's something called a brownie clod. And it's where they start throwing dirt clods at you, which goes back to red caps. And I'm like, why do they want to throw stuff at us? Oh, no. That's not nice. No. Um, There's also a type of brownie called a brown men. And it is men, not man. But brown men. Um, they are wild brownies and they like to protect wildlife. And they're also redheaded and they avoid humans. So interesting. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. I like to avoid <laughs> humans. Um, I cannot pronounce this word, but I'm going to try. It's a gruagak. Yeah. G R U A G A C H. I think that was a good try. Gruagak. It's Celtic. I don't speak Celtic, so I tried. Um, they live off the coast of Scotland and they watch over animals and they also like to have milk left out for them. And um, there's also one called a brownie, but it's spelt differently. So the ones I'm talking about end in IE. This one is from England specifically and ends in EY and they watch over beehives. Aww. Yeah, so there's some really cute ones out there. See? See? Cute. <laughs> How wholesome. How wholesome watching the beehives, which we need more of that. <laughs> so those are brownies, you know, little people that clean your house. And I would really like them here in the States. I think they would help me out a little bit at night because I don't want to clean after I cook. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> Has anybody seen one? So Serena caught me watching some YouTube videos last week. <laughs> At work. <laughs> At work. Sorry, guys. I was on break. And I was trying to find any sort of anything of people actually seeing brownies. And there was this guy whose videos I was following. Cannot remember his name right now. But he has a few different videos. And I don't know if they're fake or not. If they are, good freaking job. Oh, yes. Little, little <laughs> yes. So this guy is in... Um, England in the high and you know the forest or whatever and he's just filming himself he's a painter so he'll film himself painting and then you get all the pretty music of the nature and whatnot in his videos but he's really out there searching for fairies and so there's a few videos of him quote unquote finding these fairies so that was about as close as I got to any sightings however I did find a really interesting story, and it's, um, where was it, in, I believe this one was in Scotland. I don't have the date of when this story was, like, published or told, but how it goes is there was this man who was a little poor. He was working for a family, and he's doing chores and stuff around their house. Well, he starts to really fall in love with the daughter of the man who he's working for, and One day he's out doing his chores and he comes across this bird that 
needed some help. And he helps this bird. Bird flies away. He's like, okay, keeps doing his chores. A couple days go by and he's at that same spot where he saw that bird. And all of a sudden he sees this little guy kind of pop out of the grass and starts talking to him. And so the man is like, what, like, how do you know who I am? What's going on here? And the guy who happens to be a brownie said, do you remember that bird you helped a couple days ago? Well, that was me and I really appreciate it. I can start doing chores for you. Aww. The man whose job is to do chores around this property is like all for it. So he still does his chores during the day. He's still falling in love with the guy's uh, daughter who he's working for. And the brownie notices this, that this guy is really infatuated with this girl. So the brownie is taking extra time to do her chores, to clean her clothes, to make everything nice so that when she wakes up, she's like, like dumbfounded about how everything is always nice and prepared for her. And she starts to believe that it's the man doing this for her. She starts to fall in love with him because she's kind of a brat and wants people to do things for her. Mm. So she's like, this guy's doing everything for me. I ain't got to work. I don't even have to wash my own clothes. He's doing it for me. So this continues to happen. The brownie continues to clean up her stuff, do her clothes, all the chores that she doesn't finish, and as, as, as well as the man, and he's helping out with the chores at night to help whatever he wasn't able to finish. As time passes, they actually end up getting married. <laughs> The man and this woman. So once they're married, the brownie kind of stops doing all of her chores. And she starts to be like, hey, hu hubby, you know, um, why aren't all my chores being done? What the hell's going on? You were doing this before we got together. What stopped? Well, guess who just randomly appears in the house to start laughing at her? But the brownie <laughs> going, oh, hey, actually, that was me. Damn, you <laughs> busted him out. Totally busted him out. <laughs> Saying, sorry, actually, that was me. That's fucked up. So, <laughs> yeah, she was not happy about that and um, pretty much divorced the guy. Left That's him. Weird. I know, right? <laughs> left the guy. The guy ends up getting poor. And that's the end of the story. Yeah, pretty freaking sad. So there was that story. But I found a story that it's the exact same story, except there had a little more detail. And at the point when the brownie pops out to tell her, like, hey, I'm the one who's actually doing those chores, not your husband. Um, she ends up um, putting hot coals on the ground before going to bed. And then the brownie ends up burning his feet. So then he starts to destroy the house. Then she divorces the man, and then he comes becomes poor, and she marries somebody else who's rich. So, yeah. Gold digging ass. I oh, know, right? <laughs> so that was the only story I could really find. Um, but She overbaked the brownie. Pretty much <laughs> overbaked the brownie, exactly. <laughs> so, as I said, don't take advantage of them. and Or just abuse them. Or abuse like, them. Like yeah. So... Since I couldn't find many findings and, you know, actual stories to go along with it, except for just the regular folklore that's already out there, um, I started thinking of movies and books that have to do with little itty bitty people. The and people in the cupboard. The what? Isn't there like the little people in the cupboard? The Indian in the okay, cupboard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the people in the... Oh, I was thinking about the people under the stairs. Like, that's a good movie. Is Creepy. Okay. Creepy, no, but like, good. I was like, I'm having like a memory of being a child and watching this movie with some person that yeah. comes out of the cupboard and like... Yeah, he stuff. puts the little Indian figurine in the cupboard, closes it, locks it. Opens it back up and then the guy's alive. I probably haven't seen this since I was like five. Okay. <laughs> I just know it. <laughs> so yeah, that's is that actually, on your list? It is not oh. actually, but I think that's awesome that you brought it up. <laughs> because he ends up taking other little toys and having them See, come to that's life. that's a movie I've seen. Toy Can Soldiers? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Well, there's other movies with toys coming to life. Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, but it's not live action. <laughs> I so. thought it was really good animation, though. <laughs> I agree. Everybody loves Pixar, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the movies I was thinking about uh, was, of course, The Borrowers. Have you seen it, Serena? I feel like I read the book. There's five books. Okay, so, I was yeah, going to yeah. say, I think I read um, the book. 
but you need to watch the movie. I've seen um, The Secret Life of Arietti. I have not. Uh, so good. I can let you borrow it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I will. So um, the bar, the borrowers, like as I said, there's five books. Um, I did not write down the dates that they were published. Um, but it's all about these itty bitty people who live in the walls of our homes. They don't clean up or anything like the brownies do. But you will find like random stuff missing. And it's just for them to use in their everyday life. So you got those random socks missing. It's the borrowers. They need them for their, you know, beds and stuff. I was just saying, they're building hammocks. Exactly. <laughs> no, they go into details of that, and it's really cool. That's why I like, like, the books and movies go into details about yeah. what it looks like. And, Always and these the book idi- over the yeah. movie. Always. But the reason I want you to actually watch this movie is because there are two people in it who are from Harry Potter. Oh, who? Yeah, Malfoy. Okay. As like a little kid, little Cute. Malfoy, little Malfoy. And this movie came out in 1997, by the way, so yeah. Um, and Professor Slughorn is in it, oh, nice. who plays his dad. Oh, and, yeah. I was like, they're like, <laughs> they look nothing, they look like. nothing <laughs> alike, but they play, uh, yeah, they're the bar, some of the borrowers in the movie as the main characters. Oh, watch it and, just for baby Draco. It, it is just itty bitty Draco. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so always a good movie. I really like it. Um, yeah, just go ahead and watch the borrowers. And then there's also, um, a, it's also a movie, but it, but it's, um, a bunch of stories back from the 1700s called Gulliver's Travels. Have you heard or I've seen heard it? Of it? So there was a movie that came out, Gulliver's Travel Travels. Uh, Jack Black is in it. It came out in 2010. And um, pretty much it's Gulliver, this guy, and he has a bunch of, you know, um, travels. Travels. He has a whole bunch <laughs> of stuff going on. He goes places, okay? <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> so for this particular one, Um, This did come out in the 1700s. Gulliver is on a boat that crashes and he gets washed ashore. Well, when he wakes up, he's the prisoner of these itty bitty people and they're like tying him down. So this is regular big guy getting tied down by all these little people like just surrounding him. Um, And eventually he actually becomes part of their society. They still kind of are weary of him because he's such a big thing. And they're like, why are you a giant? Yeah, also he's a big motherfucker anyway. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, So he ends up like living on the island. He does end up leaving at some point. A whole bunch of stuff also happens. But um, yeah, that's about a whole island and a race of tiny people. So there's more folklore about it. And as I'm sitting here talking about it, I didn't do any sort of fucking research on the pygmies. And that's actually, like, like documented in, um, pa- not paleontology, that's for dinosaurs, but archaeology. <laughs> There's actual, like, evidence of these itty-bitty people on the pygmy islands. And I should have done some research on that, and I didn't. Fail. So, that's okay. We can circle back. Yes. Yes, because... we can. <laughs> Why not? Mine was hard, too. (laughs) So, yeah. So, those are the brownies. Leave some milk out for them, and they might clean your house. Especially, like, if you're like me and don't want to do the dishes after dinner. Maybe I should leave out milk. Maybe they'll do it for me. (laughs) Yeah, I was trying to pass my cat over to you, but she said no. (laughs) She doesn't want me. (laughs) All right. I... Also did something in, like, the kind of Ireland, Scotland area. Yes. Places we need to visit. Yes. All right. So, I am going to be covering the Banshee. Do you know what that is? Um, I know that they're supposed to make really, like, screechy noises is about all I know. Cool. So, Banshee, the word Banshee comes from the Irish word meaning woman of the fairy mound. Oh, okay. Her name is connected to the mythologically important tumuli, which I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, Mm -hmm. um, that doth the Irish countryside. Tumulus is a mound of earth and stones raised over graves. Oh. So think like kind like of. Like a dome almost over a yeah, gravesite. But like usually they're bunched together. Okay. There's like multiple. Okay. So they, they, they dot the Irish countryside. Mm-hmm. So picture that. She also has another name, um, Little Washerwoman. Little, I've actually heard that. I didn't know that the, that it was a banshee, yeah, though. Yeah, so that comes from the tales of her being spotted washing the blood stains from the clothes of individuals who were soon to die. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's creepy. Creepy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so a banshee is a female spirit who heralds the death of a family member that's, hmm. you know, coming. So usually it's by wailing, shrieking, or keening. Keening. 
Got my definition for Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so keening is a traditional is the traditional form of vocal lament for the dead in Celtic and Irish tradition. Keening was a vocal ritual art form performed at the wake or graveside in mourning of the dead. Oh. Also may be related back to the Middle East. Um, I was going to say it kind of reminds me of like um, throat singing from Alaska. Oh, like indigenous. Yeah, yeah indigenous. Like Inuit, I think. Yeah, Inuit. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right. So the keen itself is composed of stock poetic elements. So the listing of the genealogy of the deceased, praise for the deceased, and emphasis on the woeful condition of those that are left behind. Mm-hmm. And this is set to a vocal lament. So it's mm-hmm. like mixed with this sad song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talking about ancestors and this person dying, but yeah. in a sing song, but way. not pleasant. Like no, yeah, no. If you could pay people to do this mm-hmm. at funerals or wakes, and then I don't believe it's. I could be completely wrong. I don't think it's practiced anymore. Okay. since the fifties, but I could be wrong on that. All right. Anybody but, in Ireland care to? Oh yeah, let us? us know, please. What I found is they're saying no, but yeah, but let, let us know, me know if we're wrong. <laughs> So the first accounts of the Banshee dates back to as far as 1380, okay. and mentions of the Banshee can be found in Norman literature. Okay. So Norman literature is literature composed in the mm-hmm. Anglo-Norman language developed during the period 1066 to 1204, when the Duchy of Normandy and the Kingdom of England were united in the Anglo-Norman uh, gotcha. yeah. realm. Well, not I gotcha. Realm. Area. <laughs> in that area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so then some historians say that the first sites of the Banshee can be traced to the 8th century, which is 701 AD to 880, okay. which were based on a tradition where a woman sang a sorrowful song to lament someone's death. These women were known as keeners, and since they accepted alcohol as payment, they were said to be sinners who were then punished by being doomed to be Banshees. The hell? Yeah. Wow. So... Oh, I have so many more questions. <laughs> I don't know if I have the answers. Caners, but... you can pay them with alcohol, but it's not necessary to pay them with alcohol, right? I think that that's um, just the origin of like where banshees came from. Okay. Is they think that they were keeners that accepted alcohol as form of payment. So in punishment for them being the sinners mm-hmm. that they are taking the alcohol, they're now doomed to become banshees. Gotcha. Okay. But I don't think in the 50s people were paying... <laughs> People don't, with I alcohol. don't know, maybe. And that could be where, like, the... <laughs> Who knows? The stereotype of, like, alcohol in Ireland comes from. Oh, gosh. I don't know if that's a real thing or not. <laughs> right, right. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what she looked like. Yes. <laughs> so, she sometimes has long streaming hair. Uh, sometimes she could be wearing a gray cloak over a green dress. Her eyes are red from continual weeping. Other mm-hmm. times she may be dressed in all white with red hair and a ghastly comp- complexion, which that reminds me of like, the woman in white, which we know yep. in other mm-hmm. stories. There's a million and one stories about the woman <laughs> in white. Right. And it seems that they're all like, oh, the wailing woman mm-hmm. or, you know, the weeping woman. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking it's the same. I'm thinking it might be something it, at least our similar. adapted version of there that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Something that we borrowed. From yeah. Ireland when we came over. Yep. I, I like how we're saying we. We're, we're meaning all Americans at I this mean, point. I am <laughs> a, a lot Irish. Right, I, got, I got Scottish, so yeah. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, that makes sense. We had to bring those traditions with us yeah, and the it kind of manifest into what we have today. Yeah, exactly. So I think that that's interesting to note. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes assumes the form of a sweet singing virgin of the family who died young and has been given the mission by their invisible by the invisible powers to become the harbinger of coming doom to her mortal kindred. Jeez. So I'm your virgin cousin who died, and you're going to see me warning you that somebody in your family could die. Oh, jeez. Or something like that, you know? Okay. Yeah. Huh. And then she may be seen at night as a shrouded woman, crouched beneath the trees, lamenting with a veiled face, or flying past in the moonlight, crying bitterly. Oh. Like, are you a witch That's what I was going to say. Like, witch? Okay. And then, so, the cry of the spirit is mournful beyond all other sounds on earth, and betokens certain death to some member of the family wherever it is heard in the silence of the night. So some people... Think, oh, I saw a banshee, I'm gonna die. But that's okay. not it. 
usually okay i've i've seen conflicting things online but the way i took it is that you're not the one that's going to die so <sighs> see maybe but she's not the one that's causing it she's not death or the grim reaper or whatever you right, want to call it she's right. just warning you she's yeah. not causing it she's pretty much telling you either you or someone, someone in your you, family yeah. is gonna pass away yeah so i would say yeah, i don't like think it's you but then i think that the stories i have they are. <laughs> So, back to what she looks like. A beautiful woman, you know, wearing a shroud. A pale woman in a white dress with long red hair. A woman with a long silver dress and silver hair. Mm -hmm. A headless woman carrying a bowl of blood that is naked from the waist up. Scary as fuck. Okay. Boobs out. Blood in a bowl. Titties out. Titties out. I was just sitting there. Barbecue (laughs) sauce on my titties. Barbecue sauce on my titties. (laughs) No, yeah. (laughs) Scary, right? An old woman with frightening red eyes. A green dress and a long white hair. A lot of times I feel like the veil comes up, mm-hmm. but then that's something that is prominent in, like, mourning, so right. it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, so according to the mythology of the Banshee, if she is seen, she will vanish into a cloud of mist, and this action creates a noise similar to a bird flapping its wings. Hmm. So another one of the names she goes by is Hag of the Mist. Hag of the mist. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. And then again, banshees don't cause death. They only serve, serve as a warning of death. Okay. And then, so the song can be heard a few days before the death of a family member. And in most cases, the song can only be heard by the person for whom it is intended. Okay. So if you're in a group of people, you might be the only one that hears it. And then, and then think everyone you're thinks you're nuts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're like, no, there's no music going on. It's like, yes, there is. That lady. Right? Like, you don't hear that? And then in mythology, the Banshee was linked to the fairies as being mm-hmm. part of the mystical race Tuatha de Danan, which I feel like I fucked that up, um, <laughs> which fairies descended from. I didn't do too much research into that because I want to do an entire episode. Yeah. So I steered away from that. Mm-hmm. And we're definitely going to touch on that. Oh, yeah. Um, more fairies. Yeah. Fairies. And then I, <laughs> and then I think I found this website. Uh, cool. It's from the Irish Post. And so there are tales of battles being abandoned by soldiers because after, healing, after hearing wailing in the woods just before tussling with their enemies, terrified by the thought of the banshee signaling their impending death, they would flee. Okay. So people just abandoned, just dipping like, out. Yeah, like, like, I don't want to fight no more deuces. Yeah. <laughs> And then fleeing soldiers would usually be killed by their enemies, their mm-hmm. own armies for desertion, or simply by the elements if they stayed in hiding. And with every death, the legend of the Banshee would grow and grow. Mm-hmm. Shrieks from the forest are never pleasant, <laughs> which we <laughs> Say <know>. the least. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the 21st century with our rational minds... But when a blood-curdling howl is there to welcome you or your loved ones in the arms of death, you can imagine how the Banshee quickly became one of the most feared and featured creatures of Irish folklore. Yeah. Scary, right? No, that's hella scary. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. I couldn't find any, like, people. I mean, there's, like, a couple, like, oh, yeah, I I heard the wailing of the Banshee outside and then my cousin died or Mm -hmm. my brother died, you know. But nothing that was, like, it super stuck out. Yeah, it's hard to, like, really get a concrete, solid story when it comes yeah. to mythical creatures. Especially when the folklore goes back that yeah. far, like, mm-hmm. with both the brownies and the And banshees. the banshees, yeah. It's just, yeah, I don't it's, know. If we were in Ireland and we'd go talk to some people, right? we'll have some stories. And we but... would probably have a lot more knowledge about where these stories originated from yeah. and exactly how they are believed or interpreted mm-hmm. today. So. I thought that that was crazy. Yeah. Dude. Oh. Yeah, that creeps me out. I don't want to hear any sort of singing. Yeah, there's from... YouTube videos, too, Ooh. where you can hear, um, like, a banshee cry or a yeah. banshee scream. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Scary. Okay, I'm going like, to have to look not... into those. <laughs> oh, there's this... But, yeah, so brownies, let's keep them happy so they can clean our house and... Give I them hope... milk Yeah, give cream. them milk and cream. I don't know what to do about banshees. I don't think there's, like, a way you can... Mm-hmm. I think it's familial, too. So I think mm-hmm. that... Because um, it goes back to what they were saying about, like, the virgin in your family. Uh-huh. I want to say that I, it's somebody in your family. Gotcha. So, like, mm-hmm. you know... If, they, yeah, no, I got you. I it's like, if it. one person in the family hears it, 
and then something happens, even if it's generations later. I think it's within the family. Exactly. Familial line. Mm -hmm. So it might have something to do with being Irish or Scottish, mm-hmm. period. I think, yeah, it's mostly, like, the Celtic Yeah, area. that I've would heard, make sense. I've seen some of, in, like, um, like the UK. Mm-hmm. The, just the whole UK, I yeah. guess. It would be that area, or, like, in England, mm-hmm. where... It's, like, a special gift <laughs> you get that to... You don't you, that you don't want. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you would hear this happen, and then... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If I knew that if I heard this song, or this scream, or howl... And I've heard stories of when you hear that, that someone in your family is going to pass away. That would scare the fuck out of me. It would make me so on edge. I would be like, oh my God. Yeah, my anxiety would be through the roof. Yeah, so. I would need a different kind of brownie to calm myself down. (laughs) I agree with that. Like, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. She's coming for you, She's coming. (laughs) On that note. On that note. What is our promotion again, Sabrina? Yes. So, you guys, I will have, again, the merch store. We're going through Teespring. I'll mm-hmm. have that linked down below in the description, as well as on all of our social media mm-hmm. platforms. You can use the code MYTHIC, mm-hmm. M-Y-T-H-I-C, for 10%, 10% off, off until October 31st. Mm-hmm. And then details to our giveaway we're going to be mm-hmm. releasing how to enter that on october 1st mm-hmm. on all of our social media platforms please participate we would yes. love it if we could get you know a hundred mm-hmm. people to participate yeah. maybe we'll even choose more than one yeah you know? who knows yeah, yeah. So, so you know keep following us yeah. on instagram with weird mythic podcast we're also on facebook at weird mythic we're also on twitter at Weird Mythic. At Weird Mythic. And if anything, guys, we would like to get some emails about at weirdmythicpodcast at gmail.com. Um, as we've said in other episodes, send us your stories, man. We yeah. still want those stories. Or recommendations. Uh, recommendations. Or if there's anything that you want to like piggyback on for one of our episodes, help us out. Let us know if we missed anything. Because enlighten us. We, like we to all learn. like to learn. Yeah. So, yeah, we're not going to take anything like... Oh, they corrected me. Now I feel bad. No, no we love correct it. me, please. <laughs> this, Naomi loves to get corrected. I was like, trust. There's a few people on like what was Twitter that made fun of. I said to close or to turn off a window. Thanks for thanks for calling me out. Because <laughs> you can't. You can't. <laughs> Tried it. Didn't yeah. work. No. Nope. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. This was a good episode. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be dropping some really fun things. What's our next episode gonna oh, be? Oh man. Um, I think it's I, the games. Yeah, yeah. We're doing creepy games. Games, I need to play one and record it and see what happens. Hopefully, I survive. Haunted games, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Should we bust the Ouija board out? We I could. My we man could. does not want it at his house, well, though. I'm yeah. moving out, so, so as long as nothing <laughs> attaches itself to me, we'll keep you guys posted. Yeah. We're gonna... Every story I've heard of, I don't want to fuck with the Ouija board, but... I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss our little dabbles with that on the next episode. Dabbles with demons. Ooh, that's a good oh my gosh, <laughs> done. <laughs> I don't want to dabble with any demons. Okay, we're ending this now. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.